Hey guys, Ryan Earnhardt here from creativesoundlab.tv. Uh, today we're gonna be kind of uh, just going for broke. We're gonna be trying something different. Um, I don't know if it's gonna work, okay? Uh, but I was reading the manual of uh, these uh, N8 uh, ribbon microphones by AEA. And, you know, there's a lot of good, cool information in manuals. It's a, actually a really cool way to get fresh ideas. Um, and in this manual, it talked about ORTF for ribbons, and I'm like, what? I've never thought of that, never tried it. So today we're gonna be trying it. Um, I know usually ORTF is with a pair of cardioid microphones spaced 17 centimeters apart at 110 degrees. To my ears, uh, I really do like ORTF a lot. I use it quite a bit. Um, it's kind of like the dependency and the ease of setting up an XY pair, but it just sounds a lot cooler and a lot interesting. So I've never tried it with a pair of figure eight ribbons. So we're gonna give it a shot today, see how it sounds over a drum set and as a pair of room mics. Let's get started. So with this setup here, I really wasn't happy with how the instruments were getting divided up between the stereo image. Uh, the high tom and the floor tom were to one side. The snare drum was in the middle and the hi-hat was really the only thing on that side. So from here, I divided the kit coming in from the side so that the ride, snare, and the kick drum were fairly down the middle. High tom was to one side, floor tom was to the other side. Let's check it out. Okay, so I like that a little bit more, you know, a little bit better balance and panning of the instruments. And, you know, close mics can be brought in from here and panned accordingly to match this image. So I like this a bit better. The other thing that I tried is actually lowering the pair of microphones and then angling it to keep the snare in the center. Uh, by lowering the microphones, I was trying to get a better proximity balance of things like the floor tom, the ride compared to that high crash symbol, which was really the loudest thing of the kit, just because it was the closest thing to those mics. So by moving the mics down low and then readjusting the angle of how the mics are tilted, kept that snare in the center. Let's check it out. Okay, so here again, I mean, this was good, it sounded decent, but um, one mic, the snare side microphone, started to kind of look kind of high on the kit. We're almost looking over the top of the kit, and it's not even looking at the snare drum anymore. So uh, it started to sound kind of like a soft attack for that snare drum. The floor tom side mic, that had a better attack on that snare drum. I just wasn't happy with the sound of the drums, especially that snare using that setup. Okay, so after this, I just had to try the Bloom line. I'm really familiar with it, with the use of the R88, and so I really wanted to kind of refresh my memory on how the Bloom line sounded with the N8. So, same mics, but a Bloom line technique. This is basically an XY technique, but done with a pair of ribbons. Let's check it out. Okay, so I like that better if I'm looking to fill in kind of the middle of the pitcher with kick and snare. I found that the, the blue line definitely sounded a little bit fuller um, right down the middle like that, and I liked that. But what it also told me about the ORTF is that this configuration with a pair of ribbons might actually be perfect as a pair of room mics. So that's what I had to try next. So let's check this out. ORTF done with ribbons as a pair of room mics.
Okay, so I actually really loved that sound. You know, using a bloom line over the drum kit works well just because you're so close to the sources and there's just so much going on in the drum kit. Uh, but when you are back away from a source, maybe for a choir, an orchestra, um, a group vocal track, um, you know, something like that, I think would work a lot better for the ORTF with the pair of ribbons. And what I found is that this technique out in the room actually helped to kind of preserve the middle of the kit for the close mics and the pair of overheads. And then the ORTF in the room kind of scooted around the sides. So it didn't actually muddy up the middle too much and it actually had a nice wide stereo image for the room tracks. Okay, so, you know, the N8's as uh, bloom line, you can hear that the bloom line definitely has more information right down the middle. Uh, but splitting up the mics, panning them out just a little bit more than 90 degrees, so 110 degrees instead of 90 in the bloom line, now we have a little bit more information that's kind of pushed out to the sides, and you're actually able to kind of clear out some room in the middle. So it really depends on how you use this. Uh, it could be good or bad. Uh, but if you're looking to create some room in the middle of a mix and have kind of stuff out to the sides fairly wide, well, this could be a really cool way to build that in to a set of stereo tracks. Okay, so, you know, this was not following the rules by any means. Uh, so let me know what you thought in the comments below. Um, I was just really experimenting with this one. I know RTF is traditionally known with the pericardioids, 17 centimeters and 110 degrees apart. So um, that's how it's usually done, okay? Uh, this was definitely a experiment today. It's a sound lab, so that's what we do. We try stuff, we listen, and we say, hey, how can we musically uh, use this as a tool to make better recordings and better mixes. So I'll be talking to you in the comments below.